My guest today is Shannon Keen. Shannon, how are you? I am well. How are you? I'm doing great. It's the end of the day. I'm relaxing with a beverage. That's what you're supposed to do. And I'm talking to you. (laughs) What do you do, Shannon? So I'm a senior program manager on the Identity and Network Access Advocacy Team. So we spend a lot of time trying to demystify concepts on how to help folks embrace the modern identity platform of Microsoft. Cool. Um, and we were talking earlier about something that was new to me. I'm not sure if it's new overall. The uh, Workload Identity Federation. It is brand Correct. new. Good. I don't feel so it guilty is. about not knowing about it. <laughs> uh, what, t- tell me a little about that. Sure. So I think over time, folks have embraced more and more related to identity, right? They're moving away from Kerberos authentication. They're moving away from LDAP, right? They're moving more to OAuth and OIDC and all of the above, right? And we have these great tools inside of Azure, right? We've got a service principle, which is a way to sort of give your application access to do certain authorized actions. Mm -hmm. And then you have a managed identity, which is essentially a fully managed service principle. You don't have to worry about any expiring certificates, any expiring or rotating your passwords, right? The managed identity will do that for you. That's fantastic if your workload is living on Azure, but so many customers have workloads living in a myriad of different locations, right? Right. And you've got ways that you're dealing with third party solutions to help some of your DevOps tooling, right? Like GitHub. Um, So Workload Identity Federation. That's funny you you call GitHub a third party solution that's actually owned by Microsoft. It it is, but I, I think of it in the sense of the systems aren't on the same platform, right? So yeah, like so they're that's, separate that's companies. That's exactly what is ever, all these other companies are dealing with. They right. acquire a company like Microsoft acquired GitHub, and there's two systems that are not the same. They're not in the they, same. They need to I talk know. to each other. Right, exactly. And yeah. so this is a way in which to get that system, right, whatever it is, outside of Azure, to be able to talk to something in Azure to have you do automation, build certain solutions, and then you're doing it in a secure manner where you're not logging in and manually configuring things. I think we're sort Mm -hmm. of past that point. Things are moving and ripping and running so fast, it's hard to have to log into a system to do something anymore, you know? How does um, the uh, Windows Identity Federation help that? So what you'll do is you'll set up that trust. So in the realm of GitHub, you would set up the actual application service principle, you would set up the federated credentials, you would set it up to do a specific scenario, i.e. a PR, and then you go into your GitHub repository, and all you have to show in that from a secret perspective is the client ID, the subscription ID, and the tenant ID. So it's super awesome because prior to this scenario, you'd have to input that password as a secret inside your repository. That gets difficult to manage and maintain over time, right? Hmm. Because you want to cycle through your your, your uh, secrets, right? You wanna make sure that you're not okay. living in a world where that secret's an older secret, but guess what breaks, right? A lot of your automated workflows. So this is a way in which where you don't have to go in and d- deal with that nuanced uh, idea of updating your secret. So is this to say that I have, uh, you mentioned that there's client ID, subscription ID, and secret ID, so you still have to maintain it, but it's just one place where you have to change it. Is that the idea? Well, actually, uh, so yeah, you, it just the very first time you set it up, you get a, subs- uh, a client ID, mm-hmm. right? But you don't ever have to input that secret anywhere because that federation mm-hmm. lives between Azure and GitHub, for example. Okay. Um, so you're essentially you're telling your application your, in Azure to trust GitHub or whatever that other application is. Correct, correct. And then you don't have to worry about managing and maintaining that password over time, right? Because that's usually where you figure out where didn't we track everything correctly? It's when you have to go through and cycle an actual password or a secret, right? Um, And, you know, in the realm of of workload identities, we think of it as a service principle, a managed identity or an application. So you just think of this as an extra way to secure that deployment 
and you don't have to worry as much about maintaining that over time. So it just gets a little tricky, right? When you think through that automated process of we, we build out all kinds of cool things, we change a, a, a password, a secret, whatever, it breaks all of those things. And that right. becomes more and more of a pain as time moves forward, right? Because everything's moving so fast. Yeah. Uh, walk me through how this, um, how you actually configure this. Is this something that you do through the Azure portal? Is it something you do through scripting or do you have the options or what? So there's a great script, and we should link to this in the show notes. Please. One of the software engineers at Microsoft, uh, John Gallant, you might be familiar with him, you might not. Yeah. He's he's sort of well known in the realm of BICEP slash some of the, the tooling that he's done. He's got a great AZ CLI script that will automate this whole entire experience, right? From creating the service principle to setting everything up to trust both Azure and then to have GitHub trust Azure and Azure trust GitHub, right? There's a, a so he leans on GitHub actions, right? Or not GitHub actions, the GitHub uh, CLI, right? As well as the AZ CLI. And he's doing a lot of cool things in that script. So I will send that link to you. That way we can link it in the show notes. And then on top of it, so, you know, you create an app, a service principle in the portal, or you can create it via any sort of automated tool, right? So PowerShell, AZ CLI. A lot of folks, I think, build out their service principles using the AZ CLI because it's the fastest, easiest, especially if you're doing a lot in the realm of service principles, to set that up. So once it's set up, you go into that service principle object, and there's now a brand new section in the secrets tab. Mm -hmm. It's called federated identity, and that's where you set everything up on the Azure side, which is pretty, pretty easy and straightforward. Then all you need to do in terms of GitHub is you just need to set up secrets in the repo. So you just set up the client ID, the subscription ID, and the tenant ID, and you reference that in your automated work GitHub Actions workflow. So the YAML little piece, well, I don't know, I always call it the, the, little, the little YAML file in your GitHub Actions. There's a specific way to specify to call upon a secret. And you're not having to make sure that it's a password, right? So it's the, the client ID, the subscription ID, the tenant ID versus having to also call upon the right secret. Now, you'd always have to stuff that in there. And mm -hmm. that would always be something you have to manage over time. So now you don't need that. And that makes things a lot more secure in the realm of trying to make sure that your automated deployments continue to move forward without any sort of hiccup. Okay, and just to be clear, you, you, you're you using GitHub as an example here, but it's not just GitHub. It's any third-party system that could do this with it. Correct. Yeah. So right now, uh, the pieces that are in public preview, it's GitHub related to GitHub Actions. The Google, there's Google Cloud components, which is great. I haven't explored it too much. So admittedly, it's very new. I mm -hmm. haven't played too much on that front. Then there's the Kubernetes components, which Christos and I have been playing around with that. I think, you know, we, we've talked, we, we, we'll give a shout out to Christos, right? Christos has been <laughs> on my show a couple of times. <laughs> yes, yes. So we've been talking about trying to build out some of that, right? In terms of just knowledge base for folks to go consume that at large. And then you can also think about using it for compute platforms that live outside of Azure. So I haven't yet delved too deep. I've spent a lot of time on the GitHub side, but those are the other, I guess, what is that? Three other spots that this is this public preview encompasses right now. I see, and uh, it's in preview right now. Uh, is it, uh, what, do you know the timeline when it'll be in general release? Unfortunately, I don't, but oh. it sounds like probably this calendar year, just not quite positive on the, 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 the timeline. So I think they're trying to fi figure out some of the nuances with trying to get all this to work related to the IDP and then having that token-based authentication and authorization happen without having to deal with any sort of, you know, traditional user account inside of a traditional Windows Active Directory environment, right? I feel like that's where they're probably fine-tuning a lot of things. But yeah, I, I suspect probably this calendar year, but I don't officially know, unfortunately. Well, I see. Um, are, are you aware of anybody that's actually using this in production? No, because it's so new. <laughs> I would say this is, I think I got wind of this back in, I want to say it was late November. So that's when it reached public preview and it's only been a handful of months now. So I don't know of anybody using this. And because of the fact that I think it's super cool, the idea you don't have to worry about maintaining your secrets over time, I keep talking about it because I'm like, this is so cool. This is the nature of how it should go, right? Especially if I can get something working in a compute platform outside of Azure. So I keep saying that's what I want to go do. And if I build it out, you'll see a blog post. You might see a 425 show uh, episode, right? So we're trying to figure out where we can find the time to do this. Unfortunately, as we just joked prior to recording this, we have actual jobs that we have to focus yeah. on sometimes that gets in the way, right? <laughs> Uh, well, this is part of your job, though, right? I, it it's is. Spreading it the is. love about uh, anything identity and security related in Microsoft. It is. 
It is. But yeah, it's always hard to juggle all of the moving pieces, right? Because you have what you're normally doing, kind of your your mantra, so to speak. And our world this year is these concentrated swarms. Think of them like sprints. So we've been doing a lot in that realm, focusing on specific ways of bringing about awareness. Like we've done a swarm on decentralized identity and we're doing one on, on governance right now. It's just, it's a lot of work, right? So it's okay. a matter of how do I find the time to go and tinker and go dig deep? So I suspect as this month rolls to an end, you might see some more interesting uh, output from both Christos and I. You mentioned uh, a blog and a podcast. Are there, uh, where are those? Well, so I've got a blog that's up. It's uh, shankeen.io. Right. And you'll see I've been very much so lacking in the world of writing updated blog posts. I started one talking about source control. And I think, you know, my world, we you and joked about this when I met you. I just play a developer on TV. If you would have told me <laughs> five, ten years ago, I would be doing way more developer based stuff than I am IT infrastructure stuff. I don't know if I would, would have believed you. Uh, but I, I always feel like I need to give back on that front. And so I, I was hoping to either put a, a blog post there or the 425 show dot dev. That's our blog that we do a lot there. So um, we actually have one hopefully coming out soon talking about things like how to do Cloudflare SSL certs and an Azure web app. There's a little bit of a nuanced way of getting that to work. So we, so we do all kinds of things that aren't just, I mean, identity is our main focus, but we also are always about trying to demystify all the concepts of Azure because things are moving so quickly, right? Like you think you know it one day, you show up to work the next day, it's completely different. And you're like, great, I gotta go learn something new. <laughs> Yeah, cool. I'm looking for these websites right now. I just found your blog, and I'm struggling to find the podcast. But I'll, I'll, I'll I think the it's show. yeah. I think it's four two five. Well, and then there's the the Twitch too. So four two. I think it's oh, sort of a show dot com actually. Not, not is that what that. it is? Okay, okay, yeah. So that's our actual like landing site. There is a blog, and I do believe there is a link on that site to the blog. I think it's four two five show dot dev or something like that i can't remember yeah. well, so, what, I, what I will do takes me to uh, a page with a video with a picture of our friend christos <laughs> wearing a hat and, yeah and uh, i think what i'm gonna have to do to yeah to, to join our swarm because we're, we're starting that whole concept of reaching out to the community like we're leaning on folks internal at microsoft and then we're also extending that out to external folks too so hopefully we'll be able to pull you in david one of these times it'd be oh, fun i'd love to uh what <laughs> uh, what about um are there other resources that people go to to learn more about this um product that's in preview yeah, so John Gallant's got a great video as well where he walks through what's happening in the code and he kind of walks through setting up what's actually happening behind the scenes. And I think that one was a great video for me to kind of watch when I was getting up to speed on that actual token author authorization on authentication, right? Just to understand the nature of which you set everything up and configure it. So I'll make sure to get you the link to John Gallant's uh, video, his uh, script, as well as the resources to set this up in the portal because you could always still do that right uh yep oh um, my gosh i got a lot of links to <laughs> to get a lot of there's uh, gonna be some links things to read and watch there's gonna well. be some links <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, i'll make sure to get you the uh because i i there is a blog that we run it's through medium i just can't remember the the url uh, again i've only been on the team since november oh, team and runs it. okay yeah so it's a it's a team run and i i can't remember if it's it's something with dot dev in it and i will get you that link too right. so that way all you've right. got our, our blog, our actual site, our Twitch stream, because like I said, we always do all kinds of fun stuff there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make sure to link to the uh, public preview documentation, the link to John Gallant's script, as well as John Gallant's video that sort of explains it even better than I did in the short little bit. Yeah, excellent. I'm actually looking at the documentation right now. Was, in fact, I, I, that's how I, everything I know uh, about this product before I spoke with you, I learned from reading <laughs> that document. Nice, nice. <laughs> okay, yeah, and I and I think uh, it's 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 evolving too. So I feel like this is going to be a hot one to track, especially with that hybrid story, right? Because yeah. I don't think we're gonna. I mean, I would love it if we could wave a wand and everybody would be in the cloud, but we're we're a ways off from that. So I feel like this is going to be an interesting space to watch as time moves forward. Do, well, do you think this will be a product that'll also work for on-premises uh, applications? So yes, and that's what I want to explore because the compute platforms outside of Azure also indicate it can work on premises, but I haven't yet read deeply in that documentation just yet. So okay. so stay tuned. Maybe there'll yeah. be an opportunity to get back on your your show and oh. chat a little bit more about mm -hmm. our learnings because it's it's you know, it's it's like you always have to find time to learn new stuff and it's really fun to go down some of these weird corridors of what worked, what didn't work. And I think as this reaches closer to GA there might be even more uh, 
you know, documentation or people in the sure. community putting things up on GitHub, right? So. Excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, we're real excited about this just because of the fact that when you hear about compute platforms outside of Azure, it finally means that the same security platforms or the same security ways that we've focused on identity and identity management are now going to be extended outside of Azure. So that tells our story of being multi-cloud, uh, hybrid, right? That's a really great story to tell. And I think that would help customers out with embracing the solution down the road. That's excellent. Um, before I go, I just want to say congratulations on your new baby. Ah, thank you. That's another new one as well. And that's another reason why uh, it's been a little bit hard to keep up on blogs, right? It's uh, <laughs> there's, there's just second not... full time job. Right. <laughs> or third, however you want to think about it, right? Because it's always like full time is the regular job, right? Like the part time one is tinkering around with new tech. Yeah. And then the other full time job is taking care of a little one. But thankfully, he's been pre a pretty good kid so far. Yeah. Uh, you know, only cries when he needs something. So I'll take that over the super fussy kids, right? Yeah. Just so you know, that all changes when they get to be teenagers. I know. Cry over it. I know. I'm just, I, I'm just going to celebrate it for right now. And then like 10 to 15 years down the road, I'm sure I'm just going to like, cry like every parent I know that when their kids reach the teenage years, right? <laughs> uh, well, Shannon, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This was a fun opportunity. Technology is greater with friends.